Hello and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good to see ya. What's up, Sean, Austin, Sahil? Uh, good to see everybody here. Paul Tranny for another fun hour actually focusing on all this fun stuff back here, which is gonna be Photoshop. Right, so the goal is to like optimize Photoshop, or really just like make, make things easy in Photoshop. Uh, as well as other Adobe apps, because chances are you're also using Illustrator, you're, you might have an iPad, um, you might be using InDesign, like a number of apps. So I kind of don't want to just restrict this to just Photoshop, but that's where the bulk of it's going to be. Froja, Froja, good to see you here. Fair's in the house, hello. Golden Rose, if that's your God-given name. Um, good to see you here as well. Okay, cool. Uh, by the way, I just did a fresh install of Photoshop so you can actually kind of uh, see what everything is, is like. But, and then I'm gonna make some stuff, if that sounds good. Uh, mine is already optimized, so this is good. This is all about sort of like oh, also providing, sorry, there's a little pointers. I don't know where that little black is coming from. Uh, provide some pointers to you. Um, there we go. Uh, like how you optimize and wh what, how do you kind of trick out Photoshop to make your life easier? So I actually do have the latest version installed so we can see updates right in here, right? Everything is updated and all that good stuff. I've already installed Photoshop. If we actually take a look right down, actually let's go to all apps. See all your apps right in here, by the way. So you can like do a fresh install uh, you can uninstall and then you can actually have access to other versions of Photoshop. So you can have multiple versions of Photoshop here. Uh, oh, background music is a tad loud. Oh, you're right, it is. I don't usually have it that hot. Thank you so much for uh, mentioning that, Sean. I really appreciate it. So yeah, let's just open up Photoshop. Here we are. Uh, typically file new, right? This is all we have. I'll typically make my own version. So I'll default this to pixels. I'll do uh, 10, 1080 by uh, 1350, right? And that's sort of like an Instagram size. So that's what I'd call this, Instagram. Let's see if we could do multiplications in here. Let's just try this. Uh, times two. Not sure they did it do it. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, I've saved it. So let's just uh, 1080 times two. Yep. It actually does multiplications. And I wanted to check that because if I'm going to do something for Instagram, I'm not going to do it a one to one size. It's going to be a little bit too small. So I'd multiply that 1350. Uh, asterisk two, boom, there we have it, and I'll do 72. So I've just basically made an Instagram uh, times two uh, preset is what I've done right here, right? From there, we can go ahead and save that as Instagram times two preset. We'll save this preset, bam, and we can see it's right over here. So that's typically how what I will do um, uh, as well. So check in chat. Uh, all right. Maybe I need to refresh. A little refresh right over here. Refresh. All right. Yes. There we go, just refreshing, refreshing chat. So Fairy, I don't know if you do this or not, or Wade. Um, I don't know, do you have things set up like this? So where you'll have your different uh, settings. By the way, <clears throat> you'll notice in here on these, for these different tabs, you're gonna have uh, different different setups as well. So anyways, that's what I go with. Ba -ba. Let's go ahead and make that new version. Um, I can do the same thing in Illustrator. Illustrator might be a little bit different, but um, uh, I really like trick out Illustrator a lot because I want to have all the colors with each new file that I open up. I can't stand making different gradients all the time. And you know how I like using gradients. But the same thing in um, Illustrator 
as well. So you select like everything. I've like customized everything in some of these files. So if we take a look at this one, and you guys, if you've seen me talk about Illustrator, you'll recognize some of these assets. But right over here, like look at how tricked out this panel is with all these gradients and all these patterns and everything. Right? This is not how it normally is. How it normally is in Illustrator, if I just pick a postcard, click create, this is how empty the swatches panel is, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Not to mention brushes, right? Brushes are per file, right, in Illustrator. So if I take a look at this, what do I got, four, really? Uh, I don't think so. Click over, sure enough, you could see all these awesome brushes as I like select one you know, and draw, you could see this lovely snake, right? And we can change that as well. You guys get the idea, okay? So hopefully that kind of makes sense uh, for say Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, you have, oh, so wait, yeah, you have presets for your canvases. I need to be able to see this a little better, but I will, I will rock my camera if I make any adjustments now. Ooh, including the background value, middle gray. That's, that's smart as well. Emma, welcome. Good to have you here. So again, jump in here. Like again, we have all these like fun brushes uh, that I can start working with. It makes life easy, right? You gotta, you gotta love that, all right? There we are, right? Fun stuff. You get the idea. That was Illustrator. That's a great idea. So here's the thing about like the background color. So you might you make it a, a medium gray, which is awesome, by the way. I think that's super, super smart. Um, the problem with the background, the way it's set up now, first off, it is locked, sure. But if I go to just like change the size, if I decide the canvas size needs to be larger, so it needs to be square. So I'll just change this to square. You'll have this happen as well. You'll get these background, it just defaults to your background color, which I'm not crazy about. What you can do is you can have a, let's go right over here. You can have a solid color background, right? So this is sort of like a vector-ish type layer that's gonna be that medium gray, like so. And actually, well, maybe we'll just like make it uh, just a different color entirely just to be more fun and so we can recognize it but now when I resize this to any size as I change the canvas size to something even wider 4000 right you could see the color adjusts because this is a color fill layer and not a background uh, layer right cool you guys get the idea have that set up right um, you probably have a special workspace. I'm kind of curious as to how everybody has their stuff set up, right? I'll typically stack things like uh, brushes, brush settings. I'll have my libraries, so I'll have a whole se separate column. I don't often use these, so I pull those out, I get rid of them, right? But for my needs, I usually have my, ooh, let's put this back over right here, you know, my um, layers panel over here properties and then my uh, of course my library is right here and I can switch over to my brushes so my bigger panels are typically off to the side uh, but from there I can go ahead and grab what I need place in something like so like this hand which is what I want to work with today okay is that cool we'll drop in one we'll do a quick uh, rasterize layer let's remove background bam there it is and you know what? Let's just go ahead and rotate this whole thing. This canvas flip 90 degrees counterclockwise. I actually want to go more with this size, just so you know. I'm going to do something like this. Like so. Okay, so if you guys know me, I don't know how you guys usually work. Sometimes you're often, um, you know, adding maybe multiple layers, right? Let's turn this auto select off. That's another thing I would do. I always turn off auto select, right? Cause I accidentally click on layers, but I can toggle that on by holding down the command key. See how it turns that on like so, bam. Okay, so now I don't need to always have, be mine, you know, I don't accidentally move stuff around, but when I wanna just, uh, recognize or click on this hand, I can click and it will select that layer. Okay. 
Another thing I actually start to turn off. Thank you. This. All right, Sahil is a graphic designer in, uh, in college, and you want to get an internship at Adobe. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure where the internships are at right now, but uh, honestly, just Google it. <laughs> um, and you could always go to jobs at adobe.com. Uh, usually we have internships that start up in the summertime, so now is a good time to start kind of exploring that. Uh, I just don't know where with, with the state of affairs today, I don't know where the internships are at. Um, but we'll take a look at some of these things, like some things that, um, yeah, I'm just kind of taking a look at some of these show channels in a color. Let's do that. We can change the interface color. As you know, we can do this fun little shortcut. If you hold down the, uh, command key and click, you can actually change this from uh, just the color squares to toast. So you're like, hey, I want my interface from toast to coffee. So you're like, oh, I want the I want the latte with a splash, basically a splash of espresso, or I want espresso. So you can kind of adjust accordingly. I typically stay right here. And again, that's just the command key. I think the option, will the option key do it as well? Um, anyways. Oh no, it's not that command key. Anyways, command option will get you those. Uh, you guys do that as well. Like I sometimes don't remember the keys, but I know I'm not gonna break anything if I hold down option, command and control. Like it is one of those. I'll typically uh, do that. Uh, 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 let's go to back into preferences, general. I, I even want to get into like how you can how you set up your your desktop for optimization as well because there's other things that I have going on. This zoom I do a lot. This is under accessibility on your Mac, so you could zoom in. But you also have uh, other little apps like you could see right here. This is called um, is that called Zoom It as well? What is it called? Mouse Pro. I'm pretty sure this is Mouse Pro gives me the ability to highlight on the screen. So if you are doing live streams, I see ya, you know, go ahead. You have that ability. I also have, uh, what is the shortcut key? I just did it a second ago. There we go. With Mouse Pro, I can actually draw on my screen as well. So if I'm really highlighting something, I can use uh, Mouse Pro to add, say, this illustration. That will fade out after 10 seconds. Um, I don't use it that much, and I could probably adjust those settings, but that's also helpful if you're actually showing people how to do things. Uh, turn off to, I turn off the rich tooltips, right? Those big boxes that pop up, yeah, I don't need those, right? Let's go back into file handling. You know my stuff gets kind of crazy. So if I open up something with a lot of layers, Give me one second. Let's get something kind of crazy in here. Where is something that I've made recently that maybe you're not tired of seeing? I'm looking, oh, this statue. Kind of into the statue right now, right? Look, a number of layers, right? Um, and since there's so many layers with this file, it's not a big file. It's not, say Terry does, fo does Photoshop, does photography. So he has these big massive uh, layers, excuse me, big pixel documents with very few layers, right? So you wanna set up Photoshop to work for those instances. So we can go into performance, right? I typically have mine set to sort of web UI design. And it basically says, hey, you know what? If you're using a lot of layers, go ahead and use this one. Uh, if you're doing high, huge pixel dimensions, like say Terry would do, that's what he would click on that and it adjusts the cache tile size and the cache level. Because we used to just give you this and none of this additional information. I think this is helpful, right? In our history states, right? You can always crank that up too if you have uh, need to. Uh, Yes, Farah, exactly. Turn off those tooltips. <laughs> uh, yeah, what else? I'm just kind of clicking through these to see if I... Um... 
There's a couple things that we actually end up um, uh, working on as well. There's technology previews. And this is something we haven't talked about. There's this content aware tracing tool. I'm gonna turn that on. Again, we have this in technology previews. You wanna go explore, do that. Click okay. Um, I don't know if I need to actually be on a specific layer. Let's go back to my hand, for instance. And uh, right over here. Was that the, what did, what did we call that? Hold on. Uh, I might, I don't know if I need to restart to get that to work basically, but content aware tracing tool. It should be a tool that appears right over here. Uh, it's like a, a, a new, it should be a new pen, but actually since we're still working on it, it, we might roll it up into being an option for a current pen. Uh, maybe this is it. Magnetic. Yes, this is what, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, but this might be in previous versions, but just so you know, let's escape out of this. Mag it's going to work like this. You turn on magnetic. We'll go down to this hand right here and I can start using that and it starts to hug the hand right there. Right? Da -da -da -da. So this is a content aware sort of tracing capability um, if I decide I want to like outline this hand and uh, I need that as a layer. Yeah, oh, it says you need to restart. Thank you so much. So it'll work the same way, by the way, very similar, um, but I'm not gonna worry about restarting if that's okay. Is that all right? All right. Let's get out of that. And I got something on my screen. Trash. That little dot that appeared, this is just, oh, I got so many like pro tips I could talk about. This little dot that happens to be a work path right in here. So sometimes you'll actually switch over. Maybe you're making a path and it's not a shape layer. You know, just get rid of that path and click over and uh, get started. Another way I'm gonna trick out Photoshop, go to panel options, right? Um, <clears throat> Typically for your layers panel, you're not gonna be able to tell like what's what. Like uh, this document isn't that crazy, but I'm like, <clears throat> what's on this layer seven? What is this vector uh, smart object and where is it? What is this stuff? What the heck, right? Go right over here to your flyout menu, go down to panel options and then right in here, yes, you can change the size, but you wanna change this thumbnail contents to layer bounds. So just show me what's on that layer and not everything else, all right? Um, I usually don't expand new effects and I don't add copy. I don't need you to say layer two, copy, 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 whatever the case is. Um, uh, yeah, sounds like the magnetic lasso, very similar. Okay, click okay, boom, there it is. Now we can see how this has changed. For my gradient fill, I can actually see what that is like so. We could see this layer two um, is, uh, is just like this white burst is all it is. If you're wondering where it is, by the way, that's the next step, where the heck is layer two? Go to that layer, let's just like zoom in. And if you click on it, it'll actually show, it'll jump to that object. So that's what I'll do for this shape six. Option click on that layer, it will zoom to it. So we could bounce around and find these different parts of this head and uh, these different uh, components, you know, just enables me to jump around in this case. For this file, hopefully that makes sense. You guys get the idea. What's up, Michelle? Good to have you here. Uh, how to delete a path per point with backspace. Uh, yeah, I would actually like to see that, to be honest with you. Uh, if you are making a path 
By the way, was this... Yeah, all these bursts. These things are all paths, by the way. This. Let's go to this gradient. Right here, this gradient back here. That's actually... Um, yeah, it looks like that's actually a smart object. Um, and you can see how that's done. But... Uh, what you can do, if you are using the pen tool, and let's just say I'm kind of outlining this eye, I'll go in here, I'll turn off this magnetic lasso tool because it's driving me nuts now. Turn off magnetic. We'll just go to the regular pen. Ba, ba, and you might have missed this part. You could hold down the space bar, boop, and the space bar will pick up that point again. So you're like, oh, okay, I can readjust Put it right there, drop it in, and continue on my merry way. And by the way, you can always go to uh, any one of those points, even while you're creating, and modify it uh, as well. But there's my path. Good morning, uh, Rat Ratmany Kang in Texas. Cool. I'm just northwest of you in uh, Denver, Colorado. Right? We got that. We got that. Done. Welcome. Dana Pride's in the house. Good to see ya. Um, all right. Cool. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some more things. Um, I'll usually change my history panel and add additional stuff there. My channels, you can see. Oh, actually, they're not, but if I go back into preferences so ch show channels in in their color we can see it automatically changes it off to the side ba ba see it change right things like that click ok and we're on our way uh yeah we can create some i think i would love to create some surreal art uh just case in point if i even open up another file that i was working on too just to kind of give you some real world examples here you go here's here's another one uh that has actually there's not even many layers with this one but this is kind of fun and surreal and actually has that same sort of look with it like this. I, I kind of want to do this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this in this new piece. I would love to do that, right? So let's kind of move on. As I work on this, I want to kind of give you guys tips, right? So I went ahead and I went and removed background and it magically removed the background, right? From this hand, boom, removed it, done, right? I might need to refine this a little bit. We can get into brushes, we can get into selection tools, uh, things like that. Honestly, I would literally jump in, use my mouse, and grab that little piece right there and fill it with black, the foreground color. Um, if you ever get a halo, there's a slight halo around this hand. So if we double click on this layer mask, right? This is the selection you're going to get. It's going to say, hey, do you, when you double click on a layer, do you want to enter select a mask or do you want to view the properties of that layer mask? Well, no, I want to edit, go into select and mask. So right in here, what we could do is we could shift the edge. Watch me shift the edge. See how it's starting to glow? Let's hide extras. See how it's like glowing right there? It's because the edge has been shifted and we could shift it in because we want to choke it right sort of choke that mask we shift that edge inward i don't have to worry about using the refine edge brush around it or anything and uh, that looks pretty good click ok there we have it right make that a smart object do you guys have shortcut keys like i use shortcuts like plenty right here's one i do it's a lot oh shoot i don't i don't have it set up that's why because i just did an install but I'll typically use keyboard shortcuts, right? So we'll go to layer, what do I do? Layer, layer, t -t 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 smart objects, convert to smart object. Let's go to keyboard shortcuts, right? Layer, scroll down to what you wanna change, of course. And layer mask, vector max, there we go. Convert to smart object. I use this all the time. How I typically set these up 
is I use all the keys and then S for smart object, right? So I, I hold down control option command because I know there's no keys, no shortcuts. It's, it doesn't conflict with anything else if I use all control option and command and then S. So that's typically what I set up. Boom, done like that. What else? What do you guys got for... Um, Oh, you use the, and by the way, Fury, that's a great idea. Like use the default shortcuts. What I'm doing now is like, there's no shortcut for a smart object. So in some cases, like we need to add them ourselves. Uh, another thing I do is like sort of condensing things down into uh, tiling windows. So right in here, I'll do the same thing. T, control option T for tile. And then I'll just like right next to it, I'll do R because they're just next to each other because I want to actually no, I want to get rid of that. I want to do consolidate all to tabs. So anyways, just some shortcuts that's set up. It saves your Photoshop defaults. Click OK. And now what do we do? We use that shortcut right over here. Bam. There it is. Smart object has been made. Oh, we want to tile stuff. Bam. There it is. Right. So I usually jump out you know, go to the file I want to, and then consolidate all to tabs, right? That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Boom. It's like, hey, what file was I working on? Hey, I don't really need that one. Let's go to this guy. Boom. And we're back. We'll chop this up a little bit more. Uh, hey, Fairy, you are a lefty. That's awesome. I think we talked about that. I'm a lefty as well. Oh, fair you you your desktop you ch you change the zoom zoom in and out to Q and W. Oh, that's nice. You know what's great about that is is it only requires one hand, and that's probably why you do it. That's so smart, right? So yeah, set up. Set <coughs> Excuse me, set up your keyboard shortcuts, set up everything else, by the way. Let's just do panels really fast. Let's jump in here. You know, if you go into the swatches, this drives me nuts. All right? It's like, oh, really? I, I kind of don't want things. I typically don't want all this stuff like grayscale, scale, pastel, light, pure. I take all of these and I and I just I just pull them out of here. I say, hey, no. Let's put them all at the top. I get it. Maybe I'll, I'll keep the CMYKs, but let's take all these, the grayscale, and put them all so they're easily easy to see right in one area is honestly what I do. Nice thing is you only have to do this, you know, one time, right? You can actually load in other swatches and brushes and gradients and symbols. So let's import some swatches right now from my desktop. Here's my swatches, boom. All Paul's swatches. Let's get rid of all this stuff, let's trash it. And then here's here's how I have it typically laid out, right? Not only this, by the way, it's like, yeah, okay, that's cool, you've grouped them, you know how to freaking organize a folder, we're real proud of you. <laughs> uh, but this is nice, oh, legacy swatches right in here, which even gets more interesting, right, for some of the other panels. So we're tricking out the swatches panel, right? We could see it right here. In fact, I would make, make sure it's set to large thumbnail. Let's go to the gradients, right? Same issue. I would pull all those out, right? And even make sure you have your own, but like this. This is how I have mine. Let's get rid of all those folders. Get rid of all that stuff. This is how I typically have mine set up. Boom everything in one spot, easy to see, right? So when I go in here and I decide I want to add a gradient, looks like I've already technically added one, but I can add that to the background. Bam, bam, hold on. Let's drop it on that color fill, that gradient fill, but yeah, so I'm just adding these different gradients as you can see, easily. All right, cool. Um. So we can see right in here. By the way, so this is what I wanted to point out, like photographic toning, some of these legacy gradients, like access those, we bury them, we hide them. I'm not sure why, um, but right in here, we wanna uh, add legacy gradients, right? 
And that's what they are. Legacy gradients right in here. Gives me a number of other options, boom, right? We could change this. If I decide I want it to radiate out from the center, uh, change that to radial gradient, and now it's sort of coming out from the center. Uh, you know, picking any one of these that I want, you can see what it's doing. It's pretty straightforward. Let's well, so re. All right. So, um, and, and also for photographic toning, right? Oh, yes. That's right. Um, how the heck did I get... Um, yeah, I don't honestly know where I, uh, I don't see photographic toning in here. So, anyways, good thing I have this already saved, but this is photographic toning. Anytime I want to tint this hand a color, well, I'll go right over here. We'll go to my, uh, layers panel. Let's pull this out. Layers panel. We'll move those gradients off to the side, right in here. And this is where I'd add it. I would add a gradient map, okay? So I would use photographic toning with a gradient map. So here's my gradient map, right? It actually tints everything. Let's go ahead and clip it, bam, like so. But this is what it does. And let's look at the properties for it off to the side. you know, will tint things this color. But if you open this up, you can see these are the same gradients. So now when I access it from here, this is my gradient map that I've added. It's using the same gradients, which is nice, right? Oh yeah, you see the Pantone colors of the year. That's funny, Dana. <laughs> Keenan, what's up? So right in here, if we take a look at the photographic toning, right? These are the ones that you can see them right there, but I can go ahead and click through and tint that hand. Uh, making the darker colors say cool. And I usually like to go with these that have like, it's almost a two-tone look, right? Like this one. So the mid-tones are blue. The darker colors are more of a taupe color, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, all right. Good vibes to everyone. Ratmani, that is so kind of you. I appreciate you having you here. Man, you're a good guy. I'm into it. Thanks for hanging out. Um, legacy patterns is more and more. So again, we have legacy patterns that has all this stuff right in here, right? Look at all that stuff that you can go ahead and pull in. So just be mindful that you're going to have these legacy tools that allow you to trick out and add to Photoshop. Checking the time. Ooh, geez, 30 minutes have gone by. Um, and we're having fun and I want to do a cool like, I want to make something cool just because I think I should inspire you um, and not just give you information. That is the goal. Uh, but also in Illustrator, since I know I have Illustrator users, we have a bunch of libraries down here. So you have, say, symbol libraries, right, that you can pull in. Um, I use, uh, what is it, Florid? And some of these are kind of cheesy, but this Regal one, this Regal Vector Pack, you know, I'll sometimes use this as well. If I need sort of like cool wings, you know, it's very much a style, um, but you can pull all those out. By the way, Swatch Libraries, you see, again, I'm an illustrator, just so you know. Uh, yeah, Biola, thank you, good to see you. Uh, yeah, that legacy stuff, but right in here, like patterns, we have, uh, basic graphics like dots, lines, and textures. That's where I got all of these right up here, right? I got those from down in here. Uh, graphic dots, boom, there they are, okay? And you can see them. Uh, it looks like I just applied it, but as soon as you use it, it'll get applied to your uh, swatches panel there. And also, if you double click on it, and again, I switched it up on you. I am an illustrator, uh, just because I know plenty of designers using both, right? I don't know many people who don't. Um, but right in here, you can go ahead and change it. Change that to pink, right? We could save that as a copy if I don't want to sort of ruin the initial one. 
And now we have one with pink dots, right? That I could use in my design, which is what I was doing earlier for my design masterclass. Okay, click done. There's our pink dots. That is applied to this. And really I would make that a background like so. Zoop, zoop. Send to back. What do you do to send it back? Shift, command, open uh, color bracket. There we go. There's our little dots. You guys get the idea. Let's move on. Let's have a good year, people. Another thing, you ready for this? We're going to dive into, uh, yeah, styles and all that stuff. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about when it comes to panels, but shapes, super important as well, right? Looks really basic if we take a look in here. We could search shapes so we can find a, let's see if wolf is in there. Nope. Let's uh, square. Why would I ever want a square? What about a triangle? What about a sign, S-I-G-N? Yeah, uh, nothing, nothing is coming up. Oh man. Anyways, you can see the um, different folders right in here, right? Uh, again, this is a case where I'd load in legacy shapes and more. And then what do you have? You have all these. Like, what are you using? I'm using these typically. I'll use a checker pattern. I will use this, these lines, right? Lines, a great element drop that in right and we can use this as part of our design just adding this quickly and then giving it a gradient fill as well uh, <sighs> you know just changing it up All right. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, it's doing, it's giving me some weird lines. I've kind of had some issues, but let's not worry about that. Um, you guys get the idea, right? What would I do with all these? Let's actually delete all these, right? Cause this is traditionally what my panel looks like. I'm going to import some shapes from my desktop. Here's typically how I have everything all in one big folder because I want to just visually be able to scan all of this and see this content easily. So that's typically how I have this set up. What do you, what do you guys got going on? Uh, you need to know how to make yarn. Hmm? You saw my rope, right? Best thing to do, by the way, my, my general advice is... Um, uh, you know, always use a photo when you can use a photo because things are going to be the most realistic. Even though you can try to kind of fabricate something with filters, there's still a good chance it's going to look fake. So always use photos, even as a, like a source file um, to uh, get you started, right? So by the way, if I want to use this shape, guess what happens right over here with our custom shape tool? Same thing with like gradients. Custom shape tool will go up to the top right up here. Um, we will go to our shapes, clicking this, expanding this out. Oh, look, they're the same shapes. But now we have that loaded in anytime we want to use that particular heart in this case. Selecting that, zooming out, Let's put, putting this away. Hey, I got a question. I got a question for you guys. Um, since we were talking about being like left-handed and right-handed and stuff, I want to know who, uh, who, who sets up their panels differently, right? Like, honestly, since I now have a Wacom and the, the short of it is it's very odd that my tools are over here and all my, uh, properties and layers are on this side. So when I'm changing things, I'm literally going clear across the screen. So is that necessary? Do I need to go clear across the screen? Um, it's your, your mouse is traveling way too far. So it would, and some people work this way, uh, make more sense to put these panels on the left side, right? 
Now it's not the default way things are set up, but this means that I can jump in and um, say for instance, decide to use a gradient or use a tool on a new layer. There we go. Um, and have the ability to change it um, when everything's kind of like on one side, so. Oh, good. What? Elizabeth got a Wacom. I know for me, by the way, again, since I'm, since I am using a Wacom, that's so exciting, Elizabeth. I want to know like what size you got and all that fun stuff. But again, since I have a Wacom now, since I'm left-handed, all my panels are actually on the left side of the screen. And then I have my art on the right side, right? So I'm never, my hand never has to cross over and cover what I'm working on, right? Uh, just to select the panel. But I'm just curious if anybody else works this way. Uh, awesome. Uh, I had properties layers set up on the left for compositing on an old MacBook. It takes time to get used to exactly right. Yeah, I agree totally. But maybe even for my live streams, now that I'm looking at this, it might... Uh... There it is. It might make more sense to actually like work this way and just have, um, maybe I'm on the right side. Oops. Wait for it. Oop. There we go, this might be easier to work with. Look at this cold hand that we're working on. <laughs> so cold. Uh, Axel Zapata, yes, happy new year to you. Uh, let's have a great uh, new year. I think that sounds like a fantastic idea. Okay, so the cool thing about this is what do you do? You you probably want to, maybe you make things in Illustrator. Let's just do that really fast. Let's make a, let's click. We'll, actually, this is what we'll do. We will go in here. Polygon tool. We can click. We can add three, just have three sides. We just made uh, a triangle, right? It's going to be a black triangle. I'm going to grab, wait for it. There we go. It's under the under the width tool or these warp tools. So basically I'm just creating a custom shape, but I'm going to use this warp tool to kind of like pull things down and let's edit this. Let's make this 50, 50. Let's make the intensity 80, right? So I've just changed this tool and we'll click and drag. I, I, it needs to be even stronger, to be honest with you. Let's take this up to 100. The intensities jumped up, cranked up to 100, and that's what I want. I want these like swooshy uh, lines trailing off of this shape is the idea. So, shoo, 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 shoo. I don't know, like a dripping a dripping triangle, is that what's happening? I guess so. Inside isn't looking that good, but I just went ahead and made just kind of a fun shape, okay? Could take this, copy it, go into Photoshop, paste it. Since I know this is a, let's just say for instance, let's just paste it as a shape layer first off. There it is. There's my cool shape. Oh, it's such like a hipster shape, right? There's my shape. I can go in, select this path, right? So it's a shape layer. But the cool thing is, is I can jump in and define this as a custom shape. So I can make my own shapes and add it to that panel. And tri hipster triangle, hipster triangle, triangle. What I'll typically do with this is I would add logos to my shapes panel. Um, so the reason I would do that is, uh, that was before we had, uh, libraries. Now I put everything in the libraries panel. So we could see right in here, by the way, what we have the Adobe 2020 brand. So again, I don't need to have everything in the shapes panel cause it, it's only a one solid vector shape. I end up using libraries to kind of store everything and make life easier for me. And there's our swooshy our swooshy shape. Uh, let's change this. 
Oops. I don't know. This is gonna, this might take a while. I might even just do stick with black and white for now, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so let's get in, let's get into this action, right? Because what do we have here? We have this shape. We can throw a um, dripping color over that. Okay, we got an album cover right there. You are right. It's very album covery. <laughs> I agree. Um, probably what I would do this, I, was go, I would go in and start chopping this up, by the way. So here I have this one smart object. I'd go in here and say, hey, you know what? And again, I, I could use my pencil, whatever, but let's just take this zoop, like that. So I want to remove this, okay? So I've selected what I want to remove, okay? And most people would just create a layer mask, boom, but that does the opposite of what I want. What I selected, and usually what I select is what I want to uh, go away, it should be masked, right? So what do we do in that case is with that layer selected, go down here to the very bottom. Sure enough, when we make this mask, what we do is we just hold down the option key. So holding down the option key, click, and it gives me the inverse, exactly what I want, right? So we have that part done. Let's grab this. Let's just do, I could probably be a little bit more exact with this. Um, invert, fill with black. There we are. Command J to jump this layer. Uh, invert, turn off. Now you're just watching me work, apparently but I do need to do a couple things here. Right now we have this separated out. I have this part, zoop, separated from this other part, right? Yes, I need to clean it up. Uh, for the, instead of option key, it would be alt key on the PC. So great question. Ah, uh, I'm losing track of time, by the way. This is a dangerous place to be. Okay. so. What are we doing here? Let's go ahead and add, uh, I don't know, let's use the pen tool. We'll make sure it's set to shape right up here at the top. Make sure it doesn't have a stroke. We'll just give it that fun pink fill and we'll go in and we'll just kind of like create a, a vector shape right in here, like so, ba, 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 right? Same shortcut keys should apply. So, I actually want to use the direct selection tool just to tweak this. Zoop. Kind of like that. Okay. So, that's that. B for brush. Uh, did we talk about brushes? I don't think so. Same situation here. It's like, geez, Paul, where are all your brushes? Import them. Boom. Desktop. Here's. All my brushes being loaded in right there. Let's get rid of these ones. And right in here, here's all my brushes grouped. Again, super small what you see in here. Let's delete that group. Twirling this down, right? We could see what they look like. We could sort of increase that size. And I typically show the brush tip. This is super helpful. Show the brush tip. Show me what it looks like. It gets very helpful down here, as you can see my lovely like flower brushes. I can't tell what this is. I can t certainly tell what that is. All right, so anyways, let's jump in here. Let's paint with white. So hit the X key, zoop. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Let's do some more things. Oh, so Naboo, is it making you, is, is it kind of like, making you uncomfortable having the panels over there. Hey, I hear you. If you're thinking it, so are probably other people. So I'll move it back this way. Hopefully this feels much more comfortable for everyone. I, I agree, it makes me feel more comfortable, but I wanna do what's easiest for everybody on this stream. Cool. Zoop. Send me back over to the other side. And yeah, I have five minutes to make something awesome. 
right? But look at this, we have Photoshop kind of squared away. It's all tricked out, all of my stuff right in here. Uh, from my brushes, libraries, swatches, gradients, patterns, shapes, all that's set up. I have my shortcuts set up. I even have my workspace set up. So I wanna decide I wanna keep this workspace. So let's just go ahead and say new workspace, Paul's fave. Also keep keyboard shortcuts, menus, everything. Yeah, let's just keep all that stuff, right? And there it is, my workspace set to Paul's fave. All right, cool. Um, uh, another couple things since we're talking about things, like, oh, I need to do so much. Let's talk about two more apps that I use all the time, right? I use something up here at the top. Notice how this is uncluttered at the very top right up here, but everything is still there. So I use something called Bartender on Mac. And what it will do is it actually will show me all of the uh, menu icons when I roll over it. Otherwise it hides it, allows me to focus on what I'm designing. I roll up, oh, there it is. Here's, you know, again, say um, uh, my uh, Evernote, for instance, right? So again, I like having that hidden, uh, tucked away. Another thing I use is I love this one. You ready for this? Um, it is called Unclutter. I love Unclutter. Let's, this is what it does. It gives you notes. So when I was talking to the, the dentist's office today, I was like, oh shoot, I need to write something down really fast. Zoop, zoop. Uh, dentist appointment. I typically I put that in my calendar, but be like, you know, rule of thirds or whatever. Whatever notes you have, they go right up in there. And then your clipboard and then a whole text file. So that's what I typically use for notes. All right, cool. Let's move on. You guys get it. Let's go into our gradients. Let's throw a fun gradient in here, folks. Yeah, let's get this one. Shablow, bam. Let's do this. This is one thing I would do. Check this out, I'm gonna do this really fast. I have this gradient right here, right? Covers the whole thing. In fact, let's, let's put this on the very top, right? I'm gonna have these cool gradients like this. This is kind of what I want. I want this, but I want it like modified, okay? I'll take this. I'll turn this gradient fill into a smart object with our shortcut key, bam, there it is. Right now I can stretch it. I can shrink it down, hold the shift key, manipulate it accordingly, zoop, zoop, like that. Bring it in here, right? Because since that gradient's in a smart object, right, I could do whatever the heck I want with it. Holding down the shift key, because I actually do want to distort it, but I can put it right in there right, and go ahead and clip it to that spot right there. So uh, that's ultimately what I wanna go with, right? Having that flexibility to change this, like so, and make some cool gradients, just like I have right over here for this statue, that's how this content is made. I'll double click, here's this gradient. This is the gradient I used for, um, for this statue. So yeah, that's perfect. I could use that as part of my um, my project that I'm working on right here and drop it right into there, okay? So that's what I'll do. Double click, there it is. Ooh, look at this. Let's drop in all of these. This is so much fun. Look at this. So now I have all these gradients in there that I can actually change. So I'm gonna save this and we'll watch this change. Boom, there it is, it's changed. I'm like, oh, I could try that color scheme. Or I can try uh, maybe a green or maybe more of an orange. Let's save, do this orangey kind of one with the blue center. We can see it changes right there. So that's how that is set up. Uh, down at my last minute. Uh, Hey Paul, please tell us how to change the blue highlight color to yellow in the... F Ooh, uh, that is, that's a Mac, that's a system preference. If you wanna change this blue highlight to yellow, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a system preference and it should be under like general uh, and you just change the accent, uh, that might be it. Uh, but anyways, I could be wrong but that's okay, because uh, I don't think it's in preference. Is it in preferences? Now you got me thinking out loud. 
and perusing these. So, yeah, anyways. All right, let's move on. Uh, all right, thank you so much. I'm gonna continue to work on this design. Uh, I will post it to Instagram once I get it squared away. But again, we're kind of doing something like this uh, is the idea. I'm just gonna chop up a hand and make it cool, but hopefully you got some good tips out of this. Um, and I just thank you, everyone. Farah, I know you got the good tips too. So that's good. Thank you everybody for contributing and helping out today. Uh, we got a fun day planned for you, just so you know. Um, we have uh, somebody coming up next. Oh, Jason Levine. Jason's going to be up. He's going to be doing, oh, what you might have missed in 2020. Oh, great, great topic. I should have stole that. <laughs> That's a good topic. So thanks so much, everyone. Appreciate you guys. Uh, stick around for Jason. It's going to be fantastic. I just really appreciate you as designers and, and fellow friends. You mean a lot to me. And uh, yeah, just go out there. Be kind to one another, huh? Because it's not that hard, is it? All right, guys, have a good one. And uh, stick around for Jason. Thank you so much.